After studying this module, you shall be able to learn about limitations of Lindemann theory for unimolecular gaseous reactions, learn about improvisations for Lindemann approach that is Hinshelwood modification and RRKM theory. In the last module, we did discuss in detail the simplest theory of unimolecular reaction rates proposed by Lindemann. Lindemann approach is the simplest theory of unimolecular reaction rates and he was the first to successfully explain the observed first order kinetics of many unimolecular reactions. Lindemann assumed that there is a time lag between activation and reaction during which the activated or energized molecules may either react to provide product or be de-energized to ordinary molecules. Only under these conditions the behavior of unimolecular reactions can be explained on the basis of bimolecular collisions. He hypothesized a situation where a reactant molecule A reacts with another reactant molecule to give energized molecule A star. Over here A represents inactive molecule whereas A star represents activated molecule. The rate expression for such a reaction becomes K1 into concentration of A whole square. Now with formation of energized molecule two situations may arise. The energized molecule might react with another molecule of A and lose its energy by this collision. So A star plus A gives AA that is de-energization. Now the rate expression for such a reaction becomes K minus 1 into concentration of A star into concentration of A. The second situation is the one where the energized molecule A star might lead to product formation that is A star gives product and rate equation for this reaction becomes K2 into A star concentration. This is what we all covered in the last module. Now if the unimolecular step over here is slow enough to be the rate determining step then the overall reaction follows first order kinetics. Now with this approach came in the limitations of Lindemann theory. Lindemann approach breaks down for two reasons. Number one the bimolecular step takes no account of the energy dependence of activation. The internal degrees of freedom of the molecule are ignored and the theory underestimates the rate of activation. Secondly, the unimolecular step fails to take into account a unimolecular reaction specifically involving one particular form of molecular motion. Now, Two theories of unimolecular reactions have attempted to address these problems. These theories are Hinshelwood theory which offered solution to the first problem. Hinshelwood modified Lindemann mechanism by stating that every energized molecule will not enter into product formation but will go into activated molecule. Up till now we were using the two terms interchangeably but now they convey a different meaning. Now the second theory is RRK theory which addresses the second problem by recognizing that a minimum amount of energy must be localized in specific modes of molecular motion in order for the unimolecular step to take place. A new step is added to the Lindemann mechanism here in which the generally excited molecule A star is converted into a specifically excited activated complex A dash. The qualitative approach towards understanding of Hinshelwood modification and RRKM theory forms a part of discussion of this module. Over here we will only look into these models qualitatively without going into mathematical details. Let us begin with Hinshelwood modification. Hinshelwood modified Lindemann mechanism by stating that every energized molecule will not enter into product formation but will go into activated molecule and these activated molecules will lead to product formation. Let us look at the mechanism. 
The first step is the energization step where reactant A reacts with A to give A star plus A where A star is my energized molecule, K1 is the rate constant. The second step is A star reacting with A giving A plus A that is de-energization with K minus 1 as the rate constant. The third step under this modification is the third step is conversion of A star into activated molecule A hash with rate constant as K2. And finally, this activated molecule gives product with rate constant as K3. So, with three steps in Lindman approach, we now have four steps energization, de energization, activation, and then product formation. So, this was introduced by Hinshelwood. The second improvisation was RRKM model, that is, RRKM theory is a theory of chemical reactivity. It was initially developed in 1927 by Rice and Ramsberger and Kessel in 1928 and it was initially RRK theory and generalized into RRKM theory in 1952 by Marcus who took the transition state theory into account. The main assumptions of this model are the molecules consist of harmonic oscillators which are connected and can exchange energy with each other. The possible excitation energy of the molecule E enables the reaction to occur and third the rate of intramolecular energy distribution is much faster than the reaction itself. RRK theory initially developed addresses the second problem associated with Lindman approach by recognizing that a minimum amount of energy must be localized in specific modes of molecular motion in order for the unimolecular step to take place. A new step is added to Lindman mechanism in which the generally excited molecule that is energized molecule A star is converted into a specifically excited activated complex A dash that is A star gives A dash which leads to product formation. Now this conversion of A star to A dash has the rate constant Ka and the product formation from A dash to K has the rate constant K dash. Now, K dash is the order of vibrational frequency and K A is generally much smaller. This means that the conversion of A star to A dash is the rate determining step and K A is the overall rate coefficient for conversion of A dash to products. Now, because K dash is very much greater than K A, the concentration of A dash is very small and we can use the steady state approximation to find K A. As you already know, steady state principle states that a short lived reaction intermediate such as A star exists at low concentration in a system, then the rate of formation of the intermediate can be considered to be equal to its rate of disappearance. Now, if we apply the steady state hypothesis, to A star we get D A star concentration upon D T is equals to minus D A star concentration upon D T. Now, using this approach we obtain the expression for K A as K dash into concentration of A dash divided by concentration of A star. Now, this RRK theory assumes that the energy can flow freely from one vibrational mode to another within the molecule. This is a fairly reasonable assumption since molecular vibrations are highly anharmonic at chemical energies and therefore coupled. RRKM theory, this was the improvisation by Marcus where he introduced transition state. Now it is based on the results of Hinshelwood and RRK theory. The reaction mechanism is rewritten taking into account the fact that the rates of collisional activation and unimolecular dissociation are energy dependent. So, we have A plus M giving me A star E plus M, A star E plus M giving me A plus M and A star E giving me P. Now, over here if I look at the reaction this is very much the same as we had for Lindman approach or Lindman mechanism. However, it is important to note that this E represents those modes which are free to move within the molecule and they contribute towards the reaction. Now, on application of steady state approximation to A star E, we can find the rate coefficient for the energy range E to E plus dE. In this RRKM theory, 
again the energy of the molecule is partitioned into fixed and non fixed components and only the non fixed components e can flow freely around the various modes of motion of the molecule and can contribute to reaction in the general case it is important to note that this rrkm theory admits equilibrium between a star and a dash but not between a star and a however at high pressures a star and a are all in equilibrium transition state theory assumes that the activated complex a dash is in thermal equilibrium with the reactants this is equivalent to the assumption that the thermal boltzmann distribution is maintained at all energies which is true at sufficiently high pressure at high pressures this rrkm model becomes the same as the transition state model and the results coincide let us summarize what all we have done in this module linman theory was the first approach to explain the kinetics of unimolecular reactions however linman theory came in with certain limitations these limitations were number 1 the bimolecular step takes no account of the energy dependence of activation the internal degrees of freedom were completely ignored and the theory underestimated the rate of activation secondly the unimolecular step failed to take into account that a unimolecular reaction specifically involves one particular form of molecular motion now these two issues were addressed by two improvisations number 1 hinchelwood modification that addressed to the first problem where it was assumed by hinchelwood that every energized molecule will not enter into product formation but will go into activated molecule and this activated molecule will then get converted into product and secondly rrkm model which addressed the second problem by recognizing that a minimum amount of energy must be localized in specific modes of molecular motion in order for the unimolecular step to take place we took up the qualitative discussion of both these improvisations in detail in this module in our next module we will take up solution kinetics